This video is sponsored by Artlist. Today, we talk about gear. Oh boy, it's finally time. More specifically, we're going to talk about every essential piece of equipment that makes it into my camera bag for most of my shoots. My camera, lenses, filters, microphones, gimbals, tripods, drone, laptop, and all of the tiny accessories that make your life as a filmmaker a whole lot easier, so you can get the perfect shots. Alrighty guys, so many of you asked what kind of filmmaking gear I use to create my videos, what kind of camera, gimbal, drone, all that kind of stuff. Even though everything is listed below my videos, I always have affiliate links there. But yeah, you ask for it, you get it. So over the past eight years, I constantly upgraded my camera equipment and now I finally feel like I reached a point where I say, okay, this is my dream camera setup. And uh, it takes a lot of trial and error along the way in order to find out which pieces of equipment work for you and which ones don't. And yeah, the goal for today's video is to kind of give you that shortcut and to just, uh, yeah, share with you what kind of stuff I use. I think in total I spent something like probably more than 25,000 euros on filmmaking and editing equipment in total with all the cameras that I bought along the years and also laptops, which are super expensive. But yeah, let's get started. This thing is heavy. So this is the backpack that I use on a daily basis. Actually for the last four years I've been using the Lowe Pro 450 AW, which is one of the most common camera backpacks that are out there. It did a solid job and I would recommend it to anybody who is like on a small budget. But I recently upgraded to the Compagnon Element backpack. Actually Compagnon is a German brand and they sent this one out to me a few weeks ago and I've been testing it and I'm loving every single thing about it, to be honest. Yeah, so first of all, I really love the design of it. I think it looks amazing, all black. I always wear black. I always like to have black backpacks. Yeah, it's a uh, high quality material. It's actually called X-Pack. Uh, they told me that it's normally used on uh, race sailing boats. Um, I don't really know why you would need that on a backpack, but it's pretty dope. It's lightweight, it's very durable. Another cool thing is that it has like a proper like air mesh on the back, which is really comfortable and also some cushion on the shoulder straps and probably the most important thing for any backpack that I use is big hip belts. Just tighten it up and then all of the weight of the backpack is just like on your hips which makes it so much more comfortable to wear it. And yeah, um, I, I just love the fit of this backpack. It's like, it's right on my body. <laughs> On the front here, you also have some more pockets and you have like big side pockets for bottles of water or for gimbals or tripods and all that kind of stuff. And the most important part about this backpack is that it has a roll top. So you just open it up and then you have like an additional 12 liters on top of the 30 liters backpack and you can just put anything in there. And I think that this is a game changer because every time with my old backpack, I only was able to like store equipment in my backpack and it was completely filled up, but I never had the option to bring like a jacket with me, which is super annoying. And especially if I go on hikes and I want to shoot, a roll top is really like, it's a game changer. I actually never saw it in any other backpack. So I think alone this, fact makes it really like worth it. So if we put it down and open it up, then we basically have this main compartment that every camera backpack usually has. Also back here, like a laptop pocket uh, where you can fit in your 15 inch or 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's about it about this backpack. I think by now they actually have it on Amazon as well. Actually, you can find all of the equipment that I'm going to show you in this video in the description below. All of these links are affiliate links. Um, so yeah, if you buy something via these links, I get a small commission which really helps me um, to further create videos. Just buy via my links. <laughs> also, you can go on my kit.co profile where I have like specific gear kits for like drones and a pro filmmaker setup kit. Also like my editing kit, all that kind of stuff. You will find it in the description. All right, so let's start with the first piece of equipment.
What camera do you use? Dude, what camera do you use? Man, what camera do you use? Bro, what camera do you use? Yep. <laughs> One of the most asked questions uh, in the comments on my YouTube videos and also on Instagram is what camera do I use? I upgraded to the Sony A7S III and I'm loving this thing. It has 10-bit colors. It has a very good in-body stabilization. It has amazing autofocus with eye tracking that I never had in any other camera before. Also, it has a flip screen and a flip screen is a freaking game changer when it comes to creating YouTube videos on your own because you can finally see yourself. I can see myself right now. <laughs> and uh, that is a huge advantage because before I actually shot on the Sony a6500 for like the last four years and this one doesn't have um, a flip screen. For this reason I always had to like press record and just check if I am in the composition and if I'm actually like in focus and then I have to stop the recording again, do it all over again and with this one I can just see, okay, now I'm in focus, now I can see myself. Can't show you the camera right here because I'm actually shooting on it right now. The second camera is the a6500, I still kept it and I kept one lens with it. Yeah, so I think that the Sony a7S III is one of the most powerful consumer cameras that's right now on the market. It has 4K 120 FPS, it has 1080p with uh, 240 FPS, which is amazing. Like having that kind of slow motion also gives you new opportunities uh, when it comes to creativity. I used it uh, with my last uh, drone versus FPV video. I used 200 FPS for those intro shots and it just looks amazing. All right, so let's continue with the lenses that I have. Uh, as I said before, I've been shooting on the A6500, which is an APS-C camera for the last years. So I sold all of my old lenses and I bought new full frame lenses from Sony and Sigma. I would always recommend to either go for Sony or Sigma because the autofocus works perfectly and they have a very good build quality. So the first one that I own is the 16 to 35 millimeters F4 from Sony. I love this lens, it's a very good wide angle lens. You can get wide shots with it. It's perfect for vlogging if you want to do that. I didn't go for the um, G Master F 2.8 because this one is like half the price. I would much rather just spend a little bit less money and it's also more lightweight than the G Master. So the next lens is the Sigma 24 to 70 F 2.8, probably one of my favorite lenses that I own. Also, I didn't go for the G Master F 2.8 because this one is like 500 euros cheaper and uh, it's basically the same. It's an amazing all-rounder. Um, you just have like such a wide range of focal lengths. So this is the lens that's on my camera for most of my shoots. I also bought two low light lenses from Sony. The first one would be the 20 millimeters F 1.8 uh, that's on the camera here right now. So that's what it looks like. <laughs> one cool thing about this is that it also has like an aperture ring built into the lens itself. So you just have to twist it and you can change your aperture, which is really cool. I, I like the other lens would be this one. Hello. <laughs> That's the uh, 35 1.8 from Sony. Also, one of my favorite focal lengths is 35 millimeters. I really like the style of it and both of them do a great job so far. And last but not least, I also got myself a 90 millimeters f 2.8 macro lens from Sony. You might wonder why did you go for a macro lens? I saw it for the first time when I shot with a friend together and I just felt like it opened up a new layer of storytelling and filmmaking, just like you get an additional perspective by using drones where you have like really wide shots and you can show the whole scenery from like a different perspective. I feel like macro lenses also open up a new world, which is like the world of tiny things. So yeah, I think that it just offers a lot of creativity uh, when it comes to storytelling and uh, you actually also have different focus modes. So you can use it for a very close focus or also for the full focus range. And then you can use it just like uh, any other 90 millimeters lens. Really love this one. Oh. So next up, let's talk about filters. Um, I have this really cool looking um, Freewell filter case. I love this one. It's very well protected and you just open it up and in there I just have all of my different ND filters. So the filters that I mostly use for most of my shoots are the Freewell 
uh, variable ND filters. You don't have much being adding. Uh, I love these filters and I always use them most of the time on my camera, but uh, recently Freewell actually also launched their ProMist XV ND filters. This is an ND filter and also a ProMist filter on top. ProMist filter means that it kind of gives you a very hazy and dreamy look where all of the highlights are a little bit softened. And I actually use this filter um, to shoot my dream scene for my how to find your passion video where I'm just like walking towards this light source and it's like that very epic feeling and, and also it should kind of like feel like a dream. So yeah, I think that it worked out pretty well there and I really like the look. So besides these variable ND filters, I also have one uh, UV protection filter always on me just in case I need to protect my lens if I shoot in low light and it's, it's some action stuff. Like if I have to like hang out of a car and film another car and there are just like some rocks coming towards my lens, I obviously want to have it covered, but I don't want to have a variable ND filter on it. So that's when I use this one. One thing I almost forgot to say is buy yourself filter adapter rings. Don't get different thread sizes for your filters, but instead just get different adapter rings, which kind of add up to one and the same thread size of your lens. Um, I actually... I actually have a couple of these ones here. So it's basically from a smaller thread size like uh, 62 millimeters to another thread size like 82 millimeters. So I have these adapter rings on all of my lenses so that every lens has in the end like 82 millimeters as their thread size. And in this way, you don't have to buy multiple filters, but you can just put any filter on any lens, which is a massive time saver and also a massive money saver because you don't have to buy multiple filters. These ones are shit. <laughs> So over the last few years, it always was my goal to find the perfect camera setup that works for every situation. But I found out that it doesn't really exist because you always have to pack depending on what you're going to shoot. So if I'm going to shoot like a car commercial for a client, I'm definitely going to take other things with me than if I shoot a YouTube video or a documentary. Equipment is just highly dependent on what kind of story you want to tell and what kind of look you want to go for. So yeah, why am I saying that? I think it's really important to know what to pack in your backpack and also for the upcoming items, my microphones, my gimbals and all that kind of stuff, I have some different options depending on the specific uh, use case or the specific shoot that I'm going on. I always pack just the things that make it the easiest for me to get the best shots possible in a specific environment. I think that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Okay, so let's get going with the microphones. The microphone that I use for vlogging is the Sony ECM-B1M? No, that's wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, it's actually EC, EC, no. Sony ECM-B1M. Why do you give them such weird names? So this is the microphone that I use for vlogging and also for all of my run and gun shooting. It has a digital transmission or a digital signal. The benefit of this is that you have less interference of other devices. Also with this one, you have auto leveling. So you never have to worry that uh, your microphone is leveled in the wrong way. And also on the back here, you have different options to adjust the pattern which the microphone is going to capture. So if it's going to capture more of the sounds coming from your front or if it just captures like 360, you never have to charge this microphone because it's powered through the cold shoe mount by your camera. Um, so that's just amazing. You don't have to worry about anything with this microphone. The other microphone I use is the Rode VideoMic NTG that's currently up here. I can bring it into the frame. Whoop. <laughs> so the cool thing about the VideoMic NTG is that it's basically two microphones at one. So it's a shotgun mic that you could just mount on your camera and just use like the other one that I showed you. And you can also just use it as a boom microphone, what I'm doing right now, um, if you want to like get audio in a studio setup or also if you want to record voiceovers like I use this mic with a small table tripod and also a pop filter and I'm yeah recording my voiceovers with this microphone so it just has a lot of different use cases I can put it here I can put it on my cameras plug it either via aux into your camera or you can plug it via USB-C or USB into your laptop and record right into your laptop so that's a really cool thing okay next up is gimbals So, 
So when it comes to gimbals, I basically have two different setups. One is the big setup where I also have a microphone mounted on my camera while operating the gimbal itself. And the other one is more of a run and gun setup uh, that I use a lot while traveling or if I have to pack a little bit smaller. So for the big setup, I actually use the Xeon Crane. Do, do you say Xeon? Do you say Zion? Xeon? <laughs> the Xeon Crane. 2S. I actually already created a video about this gimbal where I show you five tips on becoming better at operating gimbals. So if you haven't checked that out already, you can find it up here. So yeah, this gimbal um, has some very, very strong motors and it also has some huge axes uh, that you can see here. I can easily mount my Sony a7S III with also with zoom lenses like the uh, 24 to 70 millimeters on it. And I also mount a microphone on it. This is something that I kind of always wanted to do but I struggled to find a solution where a gimbal can have a camera on it and also a microphone on top of it and still be able to switch it to upside down mode. Um, I actually found this small little piece of equipment uh, which is basically a, a cold shoe mount which turns into three different cold shoe mounts. With this one I can just flip my gimbal into upside down mode and I can basically move my gimbal in any way that I want while still capturing audio and I think that this is just amazing because you save yourself so much time when it comes to sound design if you already captured the audio of uh, what's happening in front of the camera. So for my smaller run and gun setup um, I'm using the Xeon Weebill S. Uh, Xeon was also kind enough to send this one out to me and yeah I'm really enjoying it. It is a lot smaller as you can see so you can fit it a bit easier into the backpack if you don't want to stick it on the side and yeah the motors of it are obviously not as strong as the ones of the 2S but still they're very very capable and they're able to hold my Sony a7S III also with zoom lenses on it. And the cool thing about this gimbal is that you can easily switch into underslung mode. So you can basically just fold down the gimbal tripod and you have a quick release plate down here and then you can just mount it back on top and now you can use your gimbal upside down which makes it really easy to control the panning with just like one hand. So it also gives you some additional options when it comes to movements if you just have to use one hand and it's also a lot more lightweight. That's it for gimbals. So obviously I'm also using tripods, uh, especially for the filmmaking where I have to film myself, like right now. Uh, my main tripod is the Geekodo. I don't even know what the model is called. It has like this ball head that you can adjust, works well with the a7S III. And besides this normal tripod, I also have a Gorilla Pod from Joby. I think it's called the 3K is the new model. Uh, the new model is much better than the old ones because finally the joints don't always move if there is a heavy camera mounted on top of it. Actually, I can't show you again uh, what they look like because they are currently here on both cameras. So this is the first tripod here um, for the main setup and this is the other tripod on the sketchiest tripod setup ever. Yeah, so these are the tripods I use. I'm using quick release plates on all of my cameras and also I have the quick release mounts on my gimbals, on my tripods and even on my backpack here on the shoulder strap I have the Peak Design Capture Clip, I think it's called. Uh, so you can basically just like plug in your camera camera and it's safely mounted while you're probably like going for a hike or something like that and you can easily just grab it. That is a real game changer. So if you don't know what quick release plates are, it's basically that there's a plate on your camera and then there's a mount on your tripod or your gimbal or anything else where you're going to mount your camera and you can easily just slide it in, lock it and your camera is on there. And in this way you don't always have to unscrew all of the different plates from, from the different types of equipment that you use. Uh, I'm using the Arca Swiss types, but I actually don't use the normal Arca Swiss plates with the safety pins on the bottom, but I use the ones from my uh, Peak Design capture clip because this one is just basically just a small square. Uh, it's not as safe as uh, the normal Arca Swiss ones, but with this one I can basically also just put my camera on a table or on a surface and it's going to be steady and it's not going to tilt because of those safety pins at the bottom. Now I also want to show you some other accessories, um, just some tiny things that can make your life as a filmmaker a lot easier. An SD card case, um, I have one from a company called Linka. You can just store different uh, SD cards in there, micro SD cards, normal SD cards, CF cards. I think it's also waterproof and uh, you should always get one of these. So yeah, another thing that I always bring with me on my shoots is a cleaning cloth. Also, I always have an air blower with me. 
Uh, you might have already seen that uh, before. <laughs> Another thing that I always carry with me is one of these screwdrivers. They are really, really useful. I saw another guy using this on one of my freelance projects and I was like, damn. <laughs> Probably all of you, you just use all of your coins to unscrew something like a plate from your camera. But with this one, you can just tighten and loosen everything much easier and also much tighter, which makes sure that the plate actually stays on your camera. Another accessory that I like to bring on some shoots is a small light. Um, I'm actually using the Aperture M X10, I think it's called. Um, so you basically just turn it on and you have a really, really powerful light that uh, is basically like smaller than my hand. So it's very, very portable and you can dim the light, you can turn it up and down. Uh, you can also change the color temperature of it. And yeah, you can see that it's quite powerful. One other cool thing about it is that you can also just attach like a small diffuser with some magnets so that you have a softer light source. Cool thing to have, but I don't bring it on every shoot, only if I have to. So yeah, that's already quite a lot of stuff uh, when it comes to drones. Um, I think all of you by now know that I am using the DJI Mavic Air 2. I'm still very, very happy with this drone. Amazing quality, amazing form factor. For the drone itself, I use the Freewell and D filter set. I already also talked about this one. It's very good and um, yeah, let's jump over to my laptop. I'm using the MacBook Pro 16 inch, eight core i9 processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM. It's basically maxed out. It has one terabyte of internal storage. I loved it before I bought the Sony a7S III, I would say, because yeah, it has amazing performance, but with the codecs that you can shoot on the Sony a7S III, it struggles a little bit, uh, or Premiere Pro struggles with it. And also another thing that I always carry around with me is um, an external SSD. I have the ones from SunDisk, the uh, Extreme Pro. And a small tip at this point, I like to have some Velcro tape on the back of my SSD and also on the back of my laptop so that I can easily slap on the SSD on the back of my laptop so I can just like plug in the cable here and then I can just like pop it up and I basically have two terabytes of additional storage. I still can just move around with it without having this annoying like SD hanging around everywhere. So that's a small tip for everybody who's editing on the go. So that's about it. Uh, that's most of the gear that I use uh, on a daily basis. I don't want this video to be demotivating for any ongoing filmmakers. It's a long process and you don't have to start on a setup like this. It's always more important what you make out of your equipment instead of having the most expensive equipment. One thing that actually matters much more than your gear when it comes to creating amazing videos is good music. If you pair the right videos with the perfect song, you're able to tell your story to its full potential and you're also able to transport very very strong emotions to the viewer. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, which is Artlists, a high quality music licensing platform that I've been using for the past four years. One thing which is really great about them is that they have an all-in-one royalty-free license for all of their songs. So that basically means that you can use it on any kind of projects, no matter if it is a YouTube video, a commercial, a wedding, um, a festival, or even like cinema movies, basically anything. They really improved their platform over the last few years and it is now very, very well designed and with their filter system, uh, you can easily find the perfect song in no time. I actually already created a video on that, on how to find the perfect song on Artlist itself, so if you want to check that out, you can find it here. Besides their music, they also have a sound effects library, which is growing day by day. Honestly, I can really, really recommend Artlist, especially for ongoing filmmakers, as it is very affordable and you never have to worry about your license as everything is just covered. If you want to sign up, you can find a link to Artlist in the description below. And uh, if you sign up through my link, you will get two extra months for free on top of your normal subscription. And also I will get a small commission on my side. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope that it was helpful to you and that I was able to show you some pieces of equipment that you didn't know about yet. If you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos, then you can subscribe to this channel and also turn on notifications. Notification squad. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh, my back. <laughs>